Okay, guys. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a video on why you only have about four to six minutes to survive following cardiac arrest. Now, if you remember, we talked about the fact that the left side of the heart pumps oxygenated blood down to the cells of the body. And the only place that nutrients and gases are exchanged is at the level of the cell and the systemic capillary. Now, what we can do is, again, what I've done for the last couple of weeks, is you can make the whole body a big whole body cell using two curved lines and a circle. So this is the whole body. Now, remember that the cells of the body need oxygen. Where do they get it from? They get it from the arterial blood, right? So you're breathing and then the left side of the heart contracting that oxygenated blood down to the cells. So you got oxygen in the blood. It's highly concentrated. And remember that there are two, basically two big portions to metabolism. You have the aerobic portion of metabolism that occurs in the mitochondria, right? And an absolute requirement for aerobic metabolism to occur is you have to have oxygen at the end of the electron transport chain that's embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So, again, anything that interferes with oxygen delivery down to the cells of the body is going to interfere with aerobic metabolism. And the best way, I'm going to write this down, not even playing. The best, most efficient way to make ATP is aerobically. That rhymes. So oxygen's critical. So anything that would cause you not to be able to deliver enough oxygen to the cells of the body is going to affect aerobic metabolism. And it doesn't get any worse when your heart stops and you have stopped breathing. So you have essentially not you're not able to get any oxygen in, and you can't pump, and pump it down to the cells of the body. So the delivery of oxygen to the cells has stopped. So aerobic metabolism stops. However, the cells are screaming, I need ATP, I've got to do stuff. Can you make ATP aerobically if your heart stops and you're not breathing. No. That's why I put a bit X there. Look at it. Look. Big. Dread. So if you don't have oxygen, you can't make aerobic metabolism work. But you do have the ability to make ATP anaerobically without oxygen. And that is taking glucose and enzymatically breaking it down to this three-carbon compound called pyruvate. Now, and you'll make some ATP. We talked about this, right? You're not going to make a lot of it, but in times of no oxygen, like your heart stops and you're not breathing, you can make a little bit, right? But pyruvate... It's going to liberate a free-floating hydrogen ion, and that's going to become pyruvic acid. So if this happens, right, no oxygen, and this happens, you are going to build up pyruvic acid in about 30 seconds. It's over. 
But again, the body does stuff that makes sense. If there's no oxygen sitting at the end of the electron transport chain, Krebs cycle and aerobic metabolism, electron transport chain, don't work. So pyruvate can't diffuse into the matrix of the mitochondria and get Krebs out. So pyruvate starts building up, and that's bad for you. So the body does stuff that makes sense. And it's going to take that pyruvic acid and it's going to convert it to a weaker acid called lactate. And lactate with the hydrogen bond is lactic acid. And that lactic acid, unlike pyruvate, lactic acid is permeable to the cell membrane and can get dumped into the blood. So this process of glucose to pyruvate to lactate can occur for a while. But what are you dumping into the blood? You're dumping lactic acid into the blood. And an acid will drop your pH. That's why it takes about four to six minutes for enough lactic acid to build up in the blood for your pH to drop to 6.8 and it's officially over for you. So, watch. What were you doing right before you died? And obviously it wasn't reading the textbook. But right before you died, your cells were making ATP aerobically, right? You had some oxygen there, boom. So you get it in the mitochondria, Right? You crab that stuff out. And you'll produce carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is highly concentrated in the cell and it's lowly concentrated in the blood. So by diffusion, CO2 is going to diffuse into the blood. But now you have your heart attack, right? You ain't breathing, your heart stops. So CO2 from metabolism starts building up. And that will combine with water and form carbonic acid. So carbonic acid is, well, an acid. So this increase in carbonic acid, right here, H2CO3, that will drop your pH as well. Not as bad as lactic acid, but it's a contributor. So why do you do CPR? Well, Remember that you still have oxygen in venous blood. So the arterial end of the blood, I'm making this up. You've got 100 oxygen balls. All right? In venous blood, you've got about 70 oxygen balls. Now, so you still have oxygen in venous blood. So, if you start circulating that venous blood, you will circulate that 70 oxygen balls. So, even though the person's not breathing, if you circulate that, those 70 oxygen balls that are in venous blood, you are going to get some oxygen for aerobic metabolism. Right? So aerobic metabolism is going to start a little bit. Now, look, the guy's not going to get up and run a marathon. But if you get some oxygen to sit at the end of the electron transport chain, then when you take glucose and you break it down to pyruvate, anaerobically, some of that pyruvate is able to get into the mitochondria and get metabolized aerobically and completely. So instead of taking 100 pyruvates and making 100 lactates before you started doing CPR, right, Now you're starting to do CPR, 
So some of that pyruvate, I'm making this up, say 40 pyruvates go into the Krebs cycle to get Krebbed out, that means that only 60 lactic acids get dumped into the blood. So if you dump less lactic acid into the blood, it will take longer for that pH to hit that critical 6.8. And that means if you perform CPR well, that person can be viable long enough to get to the hospital, give them some drugs, shock them, and potentially save their life. So that's the function of CPR. All right. Took me 11 minutes. Yay. Yeah. 